club's had with so many things to deal with. Are you just looking forward to getting stuck into some footy now? Yeah, we absolutely we are. We, um, you know, we've had a few things um, not quite go the way we'd like in the last uh, little while. So, but the boys uh, have a job to do tomorrow now, and we look forward to getting together and uh, you know winning a game of footy. Had some hurdles to overcome this week. You know, Hamish and the sad news about Todd's dad as well. Do you feel that the group, when you have a week like that, can galvanise as well? Yeah, like look up. I'm not sure whether he can galvanise. I mean, there's some difficulties in, in each situation. You know, Todd's dad obviously is significant for for his family, and uh, you know, we're just so sad that that had, that had to happen. And you know, and Hamish is a bit different one. It's an accident that happens in football that we have to deal with. But uh, you look, I'm sure the group will do everything they can to try and give the both the boys something to smile about. Just on pause. And just on Sam, how, where's his headspace at the moment? Is he feeling better about things now that it's at an end? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think Sam will be fine. He'll move on and he'll have to and uh, he'll get back to playing some more football. Ken, how do you deal with the two drastically different issues where one is obviously far greater than football than Todd and Hamish, you sort of just got to pick him up and he's got to just soldier on. How do you as a coach deal with both of those? Oh, look, we, we, footy clubs, everyone knows how, how, in, how important they are in moments like these, you know, and particularly in Todd's, you know, it's just nothing we can, can do or say to really help too much other than for Todd to know that we're here and his family to know that we're here to support him. And, you know, and Hamish just spoke to him last night, you know, he, he understands that that's part of the journey in, in the game that we play. So they're, 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 they are significantly different, unfortunately, and, um, you know, we just deal with them. Can you get some clarity on Hamish just from, from your point of view? Is it a confirmed ACL? Is it, is it surgery? Is it... Where are things at at the moment, to your knowledge? Yeah, no, Hamish will have surgery sometime in the next 24 hours uh, and to repair an ACL-damaged uh, ligament, and uh, we'll, um, he'll, he'll start the long haul to get back to playing some absolutely great football, which he was playing at the start of this year. He would have been, Hamish's form would have been in our best three players this year, which is, you know, it's always a bit of a blow, but when it's someone who's, you know, worked so hard to get himself re-established as the player he wants to be, it's even a little bit more difficult, I reckon. He was finally injured with 3-2, wasn't he, so to he was, wasn't he? Injury free. <laughs> Ken, how, how big a challenge is it to, to, you know, to take him out of your side and how do you refit the guys down there to make up for it? Oh, no, we're OK. I mean, we're lucky in, in some sense that we've got a number of, um, you know, halfbacks who are ready to play. Even Jasper's ready to go now. And, you know, we're obviously pr a pretty like-for-like um, -like type replacement, not this week, but the week after. Him. And we're, if it's an area of the ground, we have got some numbers in support. It is that area, but you do miss a, leader, a leadership player, and that's important for us to remember. So just a bit of a reshuffle for tomorrow, given, you know, your bits of hands are tied with the Sanford play on Wednesday. Yeah, we are. It's a difficult yeah. draw when you get faced with that. But we, the opportunity to play on the Anzac Day was great for the Sanford team, but, you know, it does make our challenge a little bit more difficult. But you know we'll be right. We'll get through. So Johnson and um, Barry come in. They sort of did a bit of reshuffle there with maybe Pollock going back and just work things around. Yeah, we'll work things around with which we've had to do for a little while now, and we'll just um, mix and match a bit to get what we want. And uh, you know we know the challenge that's in front of us with the uh, you know the forward end of, of North Melbourne. So we, we know there's some challenges there. Jimmy Tilford's to the travelling emergency. Yeah, we'll take Jimmy. And, um, silly thing to say. Fortunately, Jimmy was sick on Anzac Day. <laughs> So he missed the game uh, through ill health, So, uh, but he's well again, he had a little virus, so he's now fresh and fit to play if we wouldn't need someone else, so that's a small bonus for us. How's on Matty Broadbent travelling? How's he coming in his recovery? Yeah, he's get, tracking along really well now, he's, he's about to get the, on the grass in, in the next week and, and run, he's been running Alter G at the moment and, and coping really well, he's really positive, so you know, there's a great player sitting there in the wings for us, hopefully in you know, another five or six weeks. Just on North Melbourne, Possibly a hard team to read. They've had some good wins. I guess people, the critics, probably didn't peg them as being a top eight side. Perhaps is it hard to get a read on North Melbourne in your opinion? No, not really. I mean, they're in fantastic form. I think they're third on the ladder. You know, they're playing some really good football. Other than the game up at, um, I think up at Northern Queensland was a absolute plate in water. They uh, have had some great form. You know, they're going to be a real handful for us. They're playing at home, and we're going to have to travel and, you know, meet them head on with everything we've got. And in the pre-season, it was you know, the high-profile recruits, everyone was fit and healthy, and there was probably a lot made of where you guys could go this year. Five rounds in, how do you feel with your place now? Yeah, we're not, look, it's such an even comp, as we all know. We only got to look at the ladder and we see where everyone is. So, you know, we've had a couple of games we would prefer to have played a little bit better in, but we've also played well in a couple of games. I think we're like 12 or 13 teams in the competition. This competition is going to be alive right to the end and it's going to be a team that gets on a little bit of a run for an extended period of time that can consolidate where they may finish or may not finish and you know, come the end of the year, which is a bit early to be speaking about, come the end of the year, 
you're still going to play a great month of football in September to be the best side. You sort of just roll your eyes at times, though. I mean, it started off so sparkling and then, you know, the last couple of weeks have been a bit of a rocky road. Great to be in football for a long time because you just know things are never going to be as good or never as bad as they seem. And at some point, you're going to have a, a bit of a down pot patch and you're going to have some ups. You know, for us at the moment, we're in a little bit of a down. We had a good little start to the season. Hopefully, to, tomorrow's the start of getting back up again. How do you weather the storm, so to speak? I, you get back to just doing what you do, and you know, fundamentally, there's not much that changes. You know, uh, you know, you get in a contest, you get the game away the way you like. You like to start well. You know, last week I thought we started better. We just didn't hit. The, though Bokey and Gray both missed easy goals, and you know, it's a different game when you get into that mode. So uh, you know, we just got to start well tomorrow. We know North Melbourne will be up and about. So every team in this competition's up and about, though. How's um, Chad Wingard going? He's probably, you know, probably I mean, his form's been down a little bit this season. Yeah, no doubt. No, he's been. He's not been nowhere at the level that, that Chad would expect of himself. He's training and working really hard in games. Um, you know, that's another bonus for us. I think that we've got some some players who haven't been in great form at any part of the season, and we're looking forward to them continue to build their season and hopefully we'll get all in form together at some point. What is it with Chad? Like, is it just like a sort of a function of the team itself or something? No, else? I think it's a. I think it's just what happens, you know, as an individual, you don't have, every game you play is not a great game and you know, every year you play you get to have some ups and downs and for Chad and other players in our team, not just Chad, that, you know, they, they just work through patches of their season like the team does. And what's your plan for Big Ben Brown? Have you got a preferred candidate to stand him? Give Try to stop him getting the ball is the, is the thing. I think we've got to put pressure on up the field, obviously. If you let Ben run at the ball, he's, he's in the top two or three, maybe the top one or two in the competition at the moment. With Buddy out this week, he's probably maybe one. You know, he's in fantastic form. So, uh, you know, there's a real challenge there for our group as, as backs to get the job done down there because we've got Waite and Zeeble playing down there a bit. So it'll be an interesting little challenge, but pressure on the ball is going to be the most significant thing of stopping Ben. Just, just your thoughts on the AFL Grand Final. There's some talk about changing the time being tabled. Where, where would you like to play an AFL Grand Final? Anywhere, any time. <laughs> I'd be happy to be in it. So that'd be a fantastic. I, look, I like the idea of the, the Twilight Grand Final. I've got to say, I'm, you know, I don't, I think it... From a spectator point of view, it would be a fantastic event if we did go that way. AFL will make a decision. Probably not one for me to worry about too much. There were periods of that uh, Geelong game where you absolutely dominated control of the ball and, and moving it forward and so forth. You probably didn't capitalise. How do you change that against North Melbourne? Yeah, we keep at it. I mean, you're right. I mean, we, we felt like, it's particularly in the third quarter, we had great control of the game and just weren't able to put a put a bit of margin on the scoreboard and Geelong's credit they kept coming and you know they scored late in that quarter and got themselves back in front. Our challenge has been since you know we have made no secret that we're working really hard to improve our front end conversion and we're still working. So what do you do like how do you how do you manufacture a bit of extra space or a bit of room for Charlie or better delivery? Oh, well, it, it, it basically comes down to the way we move the ball, with the method that we want to move the ball. Now, last week we were a little bit slow at trying to move the ball at times, uh, although we like to control the ball the way we have. Um, we just got to make sure that we give our opportunities going forward with a bit more speed.